Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the reading of the fic, Call Our Crimes a Work of Art. Here's the summary. Class 1A has one final assignment before the end of the year exams begin. A civil war between Class 1A, with Kirishima leading the heroes and Izuka leading the villains. But the civil war turns out to be a bit more realistic for the hero team than they thought. Aspects of running a hero agency none of them ever thought of. All while sweet Midoriya lay in wait within the city. It doesn't matter. Izuku is sweet, and he isn't cut out to be a villain. Right? This fic is just over 45,000 words with 46 chapters. Here's chapter one. Shota isn't sure what he was expecting when he walked into the staff room for a sudden meeting set by Nezu, but it certainly wasn't this. I'm sorry, you want to revive the Civil War assignment? Shota asks as he sits down between Namuri and Hizashi, who look equally as unhappy about the idea. I know the three of you have your own reasons for disliking the Civil War assignment, but with villains like Stain, all for one, and Shigaraki, I think it is important for the students to understand all aspects of heroics this assignment teaches, Nezu says. Shota wants to say no. He wants to say that he won't make his students take part in this assignment. It had been one of the few things to get to Shirakumo. Let's say you understand that reasoning. How do we keep the kids on track? How do we keep this from breaking them? Izashi says. We let them recruit two teachers. You want to give them two pro heroes? The hero team is immediately going to go to ectoplasm, and from there it's over, Namuri says. Certain teachers will be sitting out. Ectoplasm, Snipe, All Might, myself, and any other teacher who wishes to. You also have the ability to turn your recruitment into a lesson. Have them meet a certain condition or have them convince you their side is right or the other side is wrong. Have fun with it. The teachers will have to follow the orders of the student leader and anyone they put in charge in their absence. What about helping them meet the requirements? Namuri asks. The students must make a mistake and realize the mistake with applicable consequences, much like when your year did it, Kayama. Nezu says. So we're all going to be the backup band for the kids, Zashi says. Exactly. You'll be there to provide experience and advice when asked, and also fill out the ranks of the students, Nezu says. And to make sure none of them take their roles too close to heart, specifically the villain team. Okay, and what about some of the objectives? Those were a lot from what I can remember, Izashi says. Shota sighs. They had been. Izashi had been on the hero team, but... Shota had told him what some of those objectives had been. I have kept much of the more mundane ones. I added a few more that required a bit more creativity. I did take out a few of the old objectives to make room for those, but most of them are still there, but optional, due to the more achievable ones. I will be having weekly therapy sessions with each student on the teams to make sure they're handling things in a healthy way, Hound Dog says. If a teacher feels a student might need to be removed from the assignment for any reason, they must confer with the other teacher on their team if there is one, or with the main booth. If there is agreement or a majority, then that student will be removed with no penalty to them. With all that settled, I suppose it is time to decide the leaders of the two teams, Nezu says. Who should we decide on first? Snipe asks. I believe I already have my choice. All Might does as well, Nezu says. You want Midoriya to be the leader of the heroes? Namuri asks. Not quite. While I believe young Midoriya would excel in leading a hero team, I believe that playing the head of the villains would allow him to use and nurture his less-used skills that I do not have the knowledge to encourage properly. All Might, who has been quiet up until now, says. You want that small broccoli child to play the villain? Namuri asks. Young Midoriya might be kind and have the heart of a hero, but he is also calculating and can analyze the situation faster than anyone I have met, aside from... from Sir Nidai. If the idea of the two of them together hadn't filled me with a deep sense of fear, I would have introduced them before the work study to gain help training him. I think the two of them would have done amazing things. Terrifying, but amazing things, All Might says, and you can hear the mourning in his voice. No hero should outlive their sidekick. Doesn't matter how old they both are. But he's so nice, Namuri says, when the respectful silence goes too long. I, for one, want to see what the kid can do. See what lies beneath that smile, Izashi says, and Shota pauses from where he's about to throw his own vote against the problem child. He knows Izashi as well as he knows himself, as well as he knows Namuri, as well as he knows... knew. Never mind. But he didn't always. There was a time long ago when he thought Izashi was an idiot with a flashy quirk. But once he made friends with a man and realized 
Not the mind of a strategist lived under the surface. His husband is smarter than anyone Shota knows aside from Nezu, and that was a quirk. But no one would ever know just by looking at the jovial blonde. I'll give him my vote. Let's see what the problem child can do. If nothing else, it will be funny, Shota says with a shrug. After that, a few more teachers give the green light. Good, we have our villain team leader. Now for the hero team, Nezu says. Who would be a good leader for the heroes? Snipe asks. It has to be someone who has shown leadership ability or the general ability to lead. I hate to be the one to recommend it, but Bakugo? Thirteen says hesitantly. No. Anything with them on opposite sides is going to be a mess, Shota says. As much change as I have seen, and young Bakugo, I do not believe he is ready for a position in leadership. He is far too hot-headed and brash to be a leader for now, especially when he is still going against young Midoriya, All Might says. Okay, what about Asui? She might benefit from the opportunity to show her leadership skills. She prefers Sue, his Ashi and Shota say at the same time. And the two of you try to pretend you aren't married, Namuri teases them. Snipe huffs. Shota grins. He had the man convinced the two of them were mortal enemies when he had started here, until the marksman had caught the two of them celebrating their anniversary. Now Namuri never lets the man forget it. I don't know. I'm sure young Asui... Sue would be an excellent leader. I fear getting the other students to follow her will prove difficult, especially young Bakugo. So, what you're saying is that it can't be anyone from Midoriya's group of close friends? Unfortunately not. There would be a lack of trust. What about Kirishima? He has shown an excellent ability to gather people together in leadership and delegation when it matters. It might also be the only leader young Bakugo would accept aside from himself. Yeah, but Kirishima is a bit blind when it comes to Bakugo. This might flip the dynamic enough to help the both of them, Snipe points out. Plus, I can see him not taking anything Midoriya might do during this exercise personally, and that's something they'll both need, Ectoplasm says. What about participants who are injured but not enough to be dead, Recover Girl says, using air quotes. Hero side will have to call you and arrange a visit. Villains will make do with whatever they can scrape together, Nezu says. That seems accurate, but worrisome. Is Class B taking part in this? Yes, however, we will give Class 1A a chance to recruit them. Then they will have the option to join. Monoma is going to be insufferable. I know. Shota sighs as more and more of the intricacies get discussed. He doesn't know how he feels about all this after all this time. But if it'll help prepare the kids for the real world, then he will do it. Anything to prevent another hero student dying. Chapter 2 Izuku isn't sure why they are having an assembly instead of heroics. Both Mr. Aizawa and All Might have been dodgy about the purpose of the assembly, and it has only served to make Izuku anxious. Why won't they tell anyone about what to expect? So here he is, in his seat, waiting for the assembly to start. The only class here is his, so that spikes his anxiety up even higher. Why only their class? Why only them? Is it about villain attacks? We're just waiting for Nezu. Quiet down, problem children. Aizawa says, and suddenly his scarf is moving, and the principal himself is poking his head out. Hello, students. Am I a bear, a mouse? Who knows? I'm the principal, he says, and Izuku has to bite his tongue to make sure he doesn't shout stoat in answer. Now I am sure Aizawa has been vague and cryptic about this assembly, and that all might has been awkward. It is now time to put your minds to rest, Nezu says. We will be holding a civil war. A murmur goes through the class. A civil war. Just between Class 1A, or... All students involved will have their performances counted as their final exam grade, with the option to take the original one if they are not happy with their grades, Nezu says. All students involved. Hmm. You and the students you recruit will be on one of two teams, heroes and villains. Students have the choice of what team they will be on, aside from the leaders of the teams who will be randomly selected. Class B will be participating in an odd way. The first three days, you will have to actively recruit them to your team. During the last two days of the prep period, they will then be allowed to volunteer themselves for a team and you will have to take them. Once the teams from Class 1A have been made, there will be a week of preparatory time in which classes will be cancelled that you can use in order to prepare for the war. In addition to your fellow students, you will also have the ability to recruit up to two teachers from the faculty from a set list, which will be given to the leaders in their rule binders. Fellow Students there will, of course, be more rules found in the rule binders, but for now that should cover it. Are there any questions before we announce our team leaders? 
Nezu asks. Principal Nezu, sir, why not have a simple battle? Why have students labeled villains or heroes? Ida asks. Because any students and teachers not recruited into teams will also be playing roles in this. It's not a battle simulation alone. To tell you anything more would render one of the simulations moot, Nezu says, and when no one else raises their hands, Nezu claps his. Terrific. Now, we put each of your class seats in this bag, and I will pull out our hero leader, Nezu says, and reaches in. Izuka's pretty sure this is rigged. The bottom of the bag isn't even moving. Just one of the sides. And if it's rigged, he's pretty sure he knows why. It definitely explains why All Might has been avoiding him. There's only one position in this game that logically makes sense for him to be put in. He's already shown his heroic leadership qualities in some less-than-legal situations. That some people shouldn't know about, but probably do because fuck secrecy, he guesses. He watches as a tag with the number eight is pulled out. Kirishima, huh? All right, I'm going to be the manliest leader, Kirishima says. And now for the leader of the villains, Nezu says cheerfully. Izuku sighs as the bag only moves on the side opposite the one that had moved last time. Yep, he knew it. Rigged. He doesn't even try to be shocked by the 18 on the tag. He saw this coming. He doesn't even bother to say anything. Now you will all come up here and one by one place your tags anonymously in either the hero team's bowl or the villain team's bowl behind this curtain. The team leaders will remain off stage. One by one, the other students head up the stairs and onto the stage, then back down after putting their names in their team bowl. Izuku sighs. He already knows how this is going to turn out. No one is going to join the villain team. That's obvious. So he can count out most of the class that he's not close to. Kachan would die before becoming a villain or following Izuku, and obviously Mina, Kaminari, and Sero are going to join Kirishima. He knows Ida is going to join the hero team. That much is as obvious as the fact Izuku's hair is green. He thinks maybe Uraraka would join him, but the guilt on her face is enough to tell him that she didn't. Todoroki is hard to read, but he's pretty sure his friend would pick heroes. It depends on which side he thinks would piss Endeavor off more. Sue is another person that he doesn't know what they would do, but she does want to go into rescue work, so she'd likely pick heroes. And the rest of the class aren't close enough to him or Kirishima to let that sway them, so it's only up to the hero versus villain idea, and he already knows how that'll sort out. Okay, everyone, it looks like the teams are set. It seems that our hero team will have a total of 17 students with Kirishima, and our villain team will have three members with Midoriya, Nezu says. Three, huh? Who? Todoroki has moved to stand beside him. You have shown yourself to be a very competent leader, and a good friend. If I'm going to follow anyone into a civil war, it would be you, Todoroki says softly. So that's one. Who was the second? When I passed the first round of the licensing exam, I did it by imagining what you would do in my situation. I've always been too afraid to push and explore my quirk, but I know you always have ideas and plans. I hope together we can find a way for me to improve and use my quirk to its full capabilities, a voice says behind him. Momo teamed up with him. Wow. Thank you both. I won't let you down, Izuku says. Even if we lose, we still trust in you to make it a hard-won victory for them. Momo says. Go pick up your rule book. We will wait here to see what needs to be done, Todoroki says. Izuku goes up and grabs the villain's rule book. Midoriya, once you've had a chance to read the rules, please feel free to ask any questions you might have, Nezu says. I do have one, Izuku lowers his voice. You were careful to never say hero students. Am I reading that correctly? Yes, Nezu says, and Izuku grins. Thank you, Principal Nezu. I hope I'm able to live up to the beliefs that led to my selection, he says and rushes back to his team. I have a plan. There's at least three people I want to recruit, but obviously we try for as many as we can get. I will talk with the reps of Class B. Even if they don't want to join the villains, they might know people who do, Momo says. Do you know what teachers you want to recruit to our team? Todoroki asks. I do. I even have a backup in case I can't get one. Okay, where are we off to first? Momo asks. We are about to meet who is soon to be one of, hopefully, two of your new best friends for prep week, Izuku says and pulls them out the door. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 2 of Call Our Crimes, A Work of Art. Chapter 3 will be up next. I hope you all enjoy this fic. I really like this one a lot. I think the author does a nice spin on it by having the teachers included in the actual Civil War exercise as well. I really like villains versus heroes exercises like this, so let me know your overall thoughts and reactions to everything so far. 
And as always, thank you so much for listening.